Okay, so in this talk, I'm going to to explain Clairaut's theorem, or rather, I'm going to give part of the proof of Clairaut's theorem, which basically says that the mixed partial f sub x y and f sub y x, the two second order mixed partials, are usually equal. Okay, and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to try to compute f sub x y as a double limit, and then I'm going to com compute f sub y x as a double limit, and I'll show they are essentially the same with some caveats. So what's f sub x y of x naught y naught? Well, there's a separate video where I compute this, where I get, obtain this formula. But for now, I'll just quickly explain how I got this. So this is, well, this is what? It's f sub x differentiated with respect to y. The partial derivative of f sub x with respect to y. That's limit as y approaches y naught of f sub x x naught comma y minus f sub x of x naught comma y naught over y minus y naught. f sub x of x naught comma y can be rewritten like this. f of x comma y minus f of x naught comma y over x minus x naught. And f sub x of x naught comma y naught can be rewritten like this. f sub f of x y naught minus f of x naught y naught over x minus x naught. So far so good? Hmm? Yes. Yeah, if, if you're confused about this, you can watch that video where I obtain this in detail. Okay. Now I want to start simplifying this. Conditional to the existence of this expression. So this is a definitional limit. But now if, if I know the limit exists, I can actually simplify it. What's the first step I can do to simplify it? Yeah. The difference of the limit as the limit of the difference. Okay, so the limit operation is essentially it's linear, so you can answer so the limit of the difference. The difference of the limits you can rewrite as the limit of the difference. Okay, let's hope I get this right. So, okay, so what do we have up here? f of x comma y minus f of x naught comma y and I take the common denominator as well. So you could have done that as a separate step but I want to say it's this. So just took the common denominator. What's the next thing? Minus yeah? f x y naught. Again what's the last one going to be? Plus f f x naught y naught. Why do you get a plus? Is there are two minus. Two minuses. So two minus is a plus. So okay. Let's see that this has to be different. So So far, so good? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me, instead of computing f sub y separately, I'll just, what what will I do to just write this one using this one? Yeah, what should I do to calculate f sub y without actually calculating it? Take this and, and do what? And do what? Well, do what? Do what? <laughs> So, so this one is f sub x y. If in, if I don't want to recalculate, oh, f oh sub okay, y, you just switch x and y in the switch expression. Switch the of x and y. Mm -hmm. So what should you get? You get limit as x approaches x naught. Limit as y approaches y naught. Mm -hmm. So denominator becomes y minus y, y naught x minus x naught. Mm -hmm. By the way, in, in the arguments of f, x and y won't get flipped around. So x will still be the first one and y will still be the second one. Uh, but the rest will. So you get f of x comma y minus f of x comma y naught minus f of x naught comma y. y plus f of x naught y naught. 
By the way, there, there's another type of notion of partial called a discrete mixed partial, where it's a lot, where you basically have the same calculation, but it's a lot easier to see because you don't have limits. So if you see in the discrete mixed partial videos, the calculations there are very similar. Okay, but you don't have to see those. This, this is self-sufficient. So what do we have? We have f sub x y and f sub y x. Now, how do these expressions differ? First of all, is the numerator the same? No. Oh, yeah, they're the same. They look diff slightly different, but they're actually the same because uh -huh. the, so these two terms are the same, the first and fourth. The second and third terms are just interchange, mm -hmm. right? But, but addition, subtraction is commutative. So, so that actually the numerator in both expressions is the same. Mm -hmm. What about the denominator? The same. The denominator. So actually this whole expression whose limit you're trying to calculate is the same in both cases. So what is different between these two? What's the difference? Just uh, a matter of order. The order in which you're calculating the limits. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. There's a horizontal and vertical. This is x naught, y naught. In, in this one, you are first up letting x approach x naught and keeping the y value, sort of y on the inside, y is still maybe not equal to y naught. Okay, so you're making x approach x naught, so you're going like this. Okay. And then after that, you are then moving, making y approach y naught. So you're first moving the x coordinate to the correct value. And then after that, once you once you have calculated that limit, then you are moving the y coordinate to the correct value. Okay. This one is y equals y naught. X equals x naught. And in the second limit, you are first moving to the y equals y naught line. And then you are moving to x equals x naught. And so that's that's the key difference. Now, under what conditions can you imagine these two limits to actually be equal? Uh, continuous? Well, yes, something has to be continuous. Now, what exactly has to be continuous? There are different versions of the theorem where different aspects, the different sets of assumptions, but basically what is sufficient is that this whole function This function, this is the function of x and y, right? Mm -hmm. This function of x and y should have a well-defined limit at the point x naught y naught as as a function of two variables in a joint limit sense, rather than just separately. If it if this function of x and y has as a limit at x naught y naught, then if it has a if it has that actual limit, then whether you calculate the limit this way or this way, you should get the same answer as that actual limit. Mm -hmm. Now, there are different versions of Clairaut's theorem where you make different assumptions. Some assume that these are continuous, some assume various things. So, and, and it's, you need to work a bit to show that from the assumptions you can work this out to be continuous and then get the result. So, it's a little more work, but the idea is that the expression whose limit you're trying to take is the same in both cases, but the order in which you're calculating the limits is different in both cases, and that's what we have to tackle in order to, in order to establish the theorem to be true.